All right. Good after, or sorry. Good evening. Um, I'd now like to bring the regular uh, meeting of Township of Langley Council for the purpose of a public hearing and development permits to order. And the first thing I need to do is to read the preamble. A public hearing is a st statutory requirement under Section 464 of the Local Government Act and must be held before third reading of a community plan, rural land use bylaw, zoning bylaw, land use contract amendment bylaw, heritage designation bylaw, or heritage revitalization agreement bylaw, which would change the use or density of use of property. During a public hearing, council acts in a quasi-judicial role for the purpose of allowing persons who believe their interest in property is affected by a bylaw, permit, or other matter to make representations to council either orally or by written submission, or add comments or elaborate upon correspondence that may have already been presented to council concerning the bylaws. It is important to note that council is not in a position to receive any additional information on the bylaws following the public hearing as dictated by case law. The hearing procedure involves an explanation from the Community Development Division on the purpose of the proposed bylaws and to hear from individuals regarding the bylaws. In order to ensure that all interested parties have a reasonable opportunity to be heard, speakers are requested to keep representations as brief and succinct as possible and no longer than five minutes, excluding time required for questions from Council. Speakers will be asked to state their name, neighbourhood and city for the record, and if referring to prepared remarks, to submit copies of these to the Township Clerk. Decorum must be maintained at all times. This includes refraining from applause, booing, or heckling. To assist with large numbers of speakers, individuals must advise the Township Clerk and sign the speakers list prior to the commencement of the public hearing. The names on the speakers list will be read out during the hearing. Individuals who have already addressed Council and wish to add further submissions will wait until the people that have not yet addressed council have had an opportunity to speak. All submissions and speakers lists are considered part of the public record. Council members should not express their views nor debate the bylaws, but may question speakers to clarify particular points in the submissions. Council may consider third reading or third reading and final adoption at this meeting or at its next regular meeting to be held on Monday, July 25th, 2022 at the Fraser River Presentation Theatre, fourth floor, right here. So with that, I'll ask for a motion to adopt and receive the agenda items. Council Ferguson moves it, Council Davis seconds it. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. There are no development permits. We move uh, to the public hearing, of which there are three public hearings. We will start with um, uh, public hearing C1. This is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100227 and development permit application number 100940, Qualico Mitchell Wilms, uh, bylaw 5791 and bylaw 5792. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Worship. The subject Williams Neighborhood Plan Amendment, rezoning and development permit applications pertain to a proposed residential development consisting of 22 single family lots in the 8,000 to 8,200 block of 212th Street. The 2.7 acre site is designated residential in the Willoughby Community Plan and single family mixed residential in the Williams Neighborhood Plan. This air photo depicts the site located on the east side of 212th Street between 80A and 83rd Avenues. Proposed William Neighborhood Plan Amendment Bylaw 5791 pertains to the proposed 12 northerly lots and amends Section 5.4.2 of the Williams Plan to permit a tandem arrangement for the required additional parking stall for a secondary suite. Proposed rezoning Bylaw 5792 amends the existing suburban residential SR2 zoning to residential compact lot zone RCLA consistent with the Williams Neighborhood Plan. Development Permit 100940 requires an exterior design control agreement for the proposed single family lots. This slide indicates the proposed site plan with vehicular access to the proposed lots via a lane east of 212th Street. Staff recommends support of Williams Neighborhood Plan Amendment Bylaw 5791 and rezoning Bylaw 5792, subject to 15 conditions and issuance of Development Permit 100940, subject to two conditions listed on page seven of Council's agenda. Your worship, a total of 208 notices were mailed out, one written submission has been received, and there are no individuals noted on the speakers list. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so at this time, I would ask uh, if there are any submissions from the public regarding public hearing C1. And I'll ask for a second time. Did you wish to speak? No, then just come forward. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Jack Limbrenner, and I live at 21168 81B Avenue. So it's right in that very area. Um, I'm curious to know what happened when we saw the initial uh, Williams neighborhood plan. These were single family lots uh, backed by a green space before we get into the light, uh, light commercial. Uh, what changed uh, is my question, and um, why do we feel at, at this time it's pro appropriate to set these homes up for uh, uh, additional suites inside. Uh, I take it that's the purpose of the tandem parking, uh, is to, uh, to house more people in each residence, more families in each residence. Um, I'm really not in favor of it. I, I think it's gonna uh, open up uh, the possibility of the, the land in between these two uh, segments to maybe further develop like condos or something. So I'm definitely against it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any um, submissions from the public regarding public hearing C1? And for a second time, submissions from the public regarding public hearing C1? And for a third time, submissions from the public regarding public hearing C1? Seeing none, uh, I will now close the public portion of this public hearing and ask if the proponent wishes to respond to any of the submissions from the public, either written or oral. I, my entourage here. <laughs> uh, I'll start off with the introduction. My name is James Pernu. I'm a planner and the project manager for this pro uh, for this proposed Can development. Can't hear you. Okay, the mic is on, so you'll, okay. uh, yeah, so that's fine. Just I'll see. If I can uh, so audio. I'll just repeat. Uh, my name is James Pernu with McElhaney Consulting. I'm the development manager for this project. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to everybody this evening. Um, uh, so uh, I just wanted to respond to the prior delegation's comments regarding the proposed land use. Um, the Williams plan is quite clear. They had established a transition single family zone right along 212th Avenue on the east side, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So uh, the remainder of the site is designated in the Williams uh, neighborhood plan as townhouse, uh, row house, townhouse strata row house in the designation. So that area is designated for a higher density and that's the area behind the lane to the east of the lane. Furthermore, there's a, a 30 plus meter uh, SPIA or uh, stream protection buffer along the east side of the townhouse site. That is proceeding as a separate rezoning application that will be presented to council uh, some point in the future. Um, the uh, adjustment to the tandem parking for the top 12 lots uh, is a re response to um, some of the policies that are listed in the Williams plan, such as the encouragement of secondary suites is another form of housing, more affordable housing, and that's embedded in the Williams plan. It's a policy, it appears many, many places. So in order to help facilitate that, additional parking, one additional stall over and above the bylaw requirement is provided for on all these lots. Um, so that's just following the Williams plan. It was visionary in that sense in trying to support and address the parking issues that are known all too well, particularly to the west. So these lots uh, are, uh, these 12 lots at the north end are significantly deeper than a typical minimum requirement. Essentially, it's almost a full car length of additional land due to the depth of those lots. So the tandem approach was uh, was proposed as, a, as an efficient way to do that on lot, additional on lot parking. Um, and we, um, uh, are, are hoping to receive support from that from council moving forward. So I think those are the two two items that were brought up by the prior delegation. So if there's any other questions, I've got Kevin Anderson, uh, the man uh, manager with Qualico, and uh, and Sarah, also a manager with Qualico, for, to answer any other sort of questions that you might have. So Great. Well, thank you very much. I don't see any questions. So thank you for your responses. You. And uh, at this point, I'll now close uh, public hearing C1. And for those in the audience, is, um, just information at the end of the public hearing, I will be um, asking council if they wish to proceed to third reading. So we'll move on to C2. And C2 is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100191 and development permit applications number 101027 and 101213, Qualico Mitchell Williams LLP 
It is uh, bylaw number 5786 and bylaw 5787. I'll turn it over to Mr. Richardson. Well, thank you, Your Worship. The subject Williams Neighborhood Plan Amendment rezoning and development permit applications pertain to a proposed residential development consisting of 327 townhouse units and seven single family lots at 21247 to 21397 70th Avenue and 21264 to 21392 80th Avenue. The 31.9 acre site is designated multifamily and mixed residential in the Willoughby Community Plan and single family mixed residential on townhouse strata in the Williams neighborhood plan. This air photo depicts the site located on the east side of 212th Street between 78 and 80 avenues. Proposed Williams neighborhood plan amendment bylaw 5786 expands the extents of the townhouse strata land use designation to a proposed 79th Avenue road alignment. Proposed rezoning bylaw 5787 amends the existing suburban residential SR2 zoning to a residential zone R1F for the proposed seven single family lots and comprehensive development zone 172 to accommodate the proposed 327 townhouse units. Development permit 101027 requires an exterior design control agreement for the proposed single family lots. Development permit 101213 proposes to relocate and reconstruct water courses within the, within the subject site in excess of streamside enhancement area requirements. This slide indicates the proposed site plan with vehicular access via proposed 214th Street, 79th Avenue, and 213th Street. Staff recommends support of Williams Neighborhood Plan Amendment Bylaw 5786 and rezoning bylaw 5787, subject to 16 conditions, and issuance of development permit 101027, subject to two conditions, and development permit 101213, subject to five conditions, listed on page 14 of Council's agenda. Your Worship, a total of 111 notices were mailed out, no written submissions have been received, and there were no individuals noted on the speaker's list. Great, <clears throat> thank you very much. So at this point, I'd ask for uh, any public submissions regarding public hearing C2. And for second time, submissions regarding public hearing C2. And for third time, submissions regarding public hearing C2 from the public. Uh, seeing none, there is no written submissions, no oral submissions, no requirement for the proponent to respond. So I will now close public hearing C2. And we'll move on to public hearing C3. C3 is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100201, Bath Investments Limited, bylaw 5793 and bylaw 5794. Mr. Richardson. Well, thank you, Your Worship. The subject of Fisher Community Plan, Rural Plan, and Rezoning Bylaw Amendments pertain to lands at 23699 and 23737 Fraser Highway. The 10.19 acre site is designated rural in the Official Community Plan, rural in the Regional Growth Strategy, and small farm country estates in the Rural Plan. This air photo depicts the site located in the 23700 block on the north side of Fraser Highway. Official Community Plan and Rural Plan Amendment Bylaw 5793 designates the site industrial in the Official Community Plan, permits industrial uses on a site-specific basis, and includes the site as a development permit area in the Rural Plan. Rezoning Bylaw 5794 rezones the site from Rural Zone RU1 to Service Industrial Zone M1B, including uses accommodated under an existing temporary use permit on the site. Associated Bylaw 5803 amends the service level in the Subdivision Development Servicing Bylaw to service level one urban. Staff recommend council consider official community plan and rural plan amendment bylaw 5793 and rezoning bylaw 5794, subject to 13 conditions listed on page 11 of council's agenda. Your worship, a total of 59 notices were mailed out, one written submission has been received, and there were no individuals noted on the speaker's list. Great, <clears throat> thank you very much. So at this point, I'll ask if there's any um, submissions from the public on public hearing C3. And I'll ask for a second time if there are any submissions from the public on public hearing C3. And for a third time, are there any public submissions on public hearing C3? Seeing none, I'll close the public portion of the, of the hearing. And at this point, uh, there was one written submission if the proponent wishes to respond to the written submission, this is their opportunity.
Hi there, Your Worship. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Patrick Giesbrecht. I live in Abbotsford, not in the township. I'm representing the, uh, the owners of the subject properties. Um, I would just, I guess, uh, uh, the one comment that I would want to make is, uh, was regarding the, the landscaping and the view of the property from Fraser Highway, and that was a comment that was uh, raised earlier. And I just wanted to uh, let you all know that we have some, there's been some work that's been done on the front of the property. We have some pictures showing that, should any of you be interested in, in seeing that. And um, the, essentially the, the, the piece of the property that would be um, dedicated for a D cell lane in the future um, will be maintained by the owner until such time as uh, that would be required, at which time obviously the landscaping and so forth would be would be updated. So currently the landscaping is done in accordance with the township's industrial zone bylaw and it will be maintained as, as such moving forward. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that, I'll close public hearing C3. And now I will ask uh, council um, if we wish to have a motion to proceed to third reading for public hearing C1. Council Long moves it, Council Kuntz seconds it. So just a show of hands, all those in favor and opposed, Councilor Arneson, Councilor Woodward, Councilor Davis, Councilor Richter is opposed. So it's five to four, that does carry. So we can move forward uh, with the public hearing. So, I mean, with the third reading. Can I have a motion? Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, thank you, thank you for that. Thank so in their procedure bylaw, it requires a six, um, a two thirds vote. Under the community charter, which I don't know what the legal term is, supersedes the procedure bylaw, only requires a simple majority. And I'll ask the clerk to maybe clarify. Uh, so if my ruling is in line with the community charter, which supersedes our procedure bylaw. Um, technically, yes, you are correct, sir. The uh, community charter does supersede our bylaw, and therefore the appropriate um, vote would be a simple majority. Uh, but it, okay. it's, it, it's, it's a is interesting this, situation. It is, does put us in an interesting situation. Is it still the call of the chair, at, or do I have to follow? I mean, it, it would be the call of the chair, okay. but there is the option for the chair to be challenged should council members feel it should be. Okay. 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 Fair enough. I don't believe we have to vote on varying the council procedure bylaw as the community charter is clear that uh, that it has paramountcy on our bylaw. So we are best to keep to the charter as much as possible. Yeah, so, so thank you for raising that because I know that might have come up. It puts me in a position as chair, um, awkward position because of our procedure bylaws in conflict with the community charter, but I do have to follow the community Can you help charter. With that, okay, Councilor Long. You also have a I'm happy to order. change my vote to make sure that we're all happy here. And if, if, if the majority of council, well, the majority of council did want to entertain third reading, but uh, we could do it next meeting just as easily. Okay, with that, I will then. It's up to you, though. Well, I know, but if you. <laughs> Should we call the vote again? Oh. No, I'm just helping the mayor no. out. Well, the vote was called. It was, it was clear. Um, I, I, there would have to be reconsideration. You voted in favor, so at the same meeting, you have you can't call a reconsideration. So I can though, yeah. So or just wait till next week. Or just wait till next week. It seems the will of council to wait till next week. So I will rule. Um, but Councilor Long voted in. on the winning side of the vote. Yes. Yes. So he can. So change. he could he could okay. call for reconsideration. Okay, he can. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll wait till next week then. All right. Just make everything simple. Let's try this again on C2. Um, does anybody want to make a motion to move third reading? Councilor Kuntz moves it. Is there a seconder? So. Councilor Whitmarsh, so show of hands. All those in favor of moving it to, and, and opposed? Councilor Richter, Councilor Long, Arneson, okay. And Woodward and Davis opposed, so that won't move. We'll go to C3. That's just going to increase our, <laughs> our work next time. Uh, Councillor Ferguson moves um, to here C three third reading. Is there a seconder? Councillor Richter, I'll call the question. All those in favor? 
and opposed. Councilor Arneson is opposed, so we can proceed to third reading for C3. So I now need a motion for C3. Um, Councilor Whitmarsh moves it. Councilor Woodward seconds it. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on the computer. It carries unanimously. There we go. That's the end of the meeting. Terminate. Councilor Davis <laughs> makes his usual exuberant termination motion. Is there a seconder? I'll second. Like Councilor Kuhn seconds. All those in favor of carried. Well, thank you very much for attending. And so third reading will be held at the next meeting for number one and number two. <clears throat>